How's it going guys? In this video I'm going to be discussing these faults that are on a Volkswagen Passat. This is a 2013 model Blue Motion and if you look here you can see the elect electronic stability control, uh, amber warning light, ABS. Then over here we have a steering fault and over here we have the electric uh, parking fault. All of these in amber means that there is an issue. They all came on at the same time which leads me to believe that they are all to do with the exact same fault. Also when the bonnet is closed there is a start stop error that comes up on the dash too. So we're going to be talking about this problem and I'm going to be showing you what rectifies this particular fault. I'm just plugged into the vehicle at the moment and I'm about to run the fault codes on it. Okay, so two faults found. ABS wheel speed sensor, rear right G44. Mileage recorded was at 160, it's now at 162. And let's scroll down. And it is wheel speed sensor, rear right G44. 160, it's the same. Same fault recorded twice. Okay, so that's giving me a direct indication as to what's going on. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, put this vehicle up in the air, whip off the uh, rear right wheel, and uh, let's have a look in there at uh, the reluctor ring if it's visible, and just do a all-around inspection on that area in case there's any damage wiring or something simple like that before we condemn the sensor afterwards. If everything's okay in that area, I'm going to... Um, put the live data on and spin the wheel and see if we're getting any reading at all from that particular side. Just putting this vehicle up in the air now, but I wanted to show you the warning on the dash before I go ahead and switch the engine off. So you can see there the error ABS stabilization control and um, what also comes up is the start stop function. I'll just restart it for you so you can see it. There we go, and you can see the start-stop error. Okay, I'm gonna put this up in the air now and start to do an investigation on it. Okay, so we have a visual just up there of the wheel speed sensor. So if I come in from this side, this is the unit here and it's held in by a Looks like a triple square head or a spline head, as they call it, over here. What I'm going to be doing on this one will be using my scan tool and getting readings while it's up on the lift. And what you can do as well, if these units are interchangeable, because it looks like from first glance it's getting the pickup off the wheel bearing. So um, you want to determine if it's the wheel speed sensor or the actual pickup itself, whether it's a wheel bearing or a reluctor ring, uh, whatever your vehicle setup is, you want to find that out. So by doing a simple switch, if the left hand rear is interchangeable with the right hand rear, we can determine um, what the cause of it is. We can determine if the um, sensor has become faulty or if the issue is with the actual item like wheel bearing or reluctor ring. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start to determine which, uh, which is the faulty item on this now as quick as I possibly can. I have the vehicle lowered down. I have my Vagcom hooked up now to check the wheel speed sensors and I'm just going to spin each wheel and get a reading in it. This is where a wireless uh, Bluetooth scan tool comes in very handy because you can have the scan tool beside you as you spin the wheel. Unfortunately mine is out of action at the moment so 
I'm using uh, VACOM, which is a wired system that I have. I'm going to set the computer up um, so you can look at the screen, and we're going to start off with the left-hand rear wheel, then I'm going to go right-hand rear, right-hand front, left-hand front, and that's the sequence that you will see on your screen, and you will see any changes as I spin. And as you could see in that last clip, there was absolutely no reading coming from the right-hand rear. I don't know if it's possible, but what I'm going to do next, because of the time of the evening it is, and also the accessibility of the sensor, is I'm going to go and switch the left-hand uh, sensor with the right-hand sensor. If they are interchangeable, it is a very, very simple thing to do uh, in regards to diagnosing. You can do it yourself, no problem, and you will be able to find out if you have uh, rectified the fault or not by removing the sensor. So looking up at the bolt that's up here, it looked like it was a triple square like this item here, but it's not, it's actually a hex head, and it's a hex five, number five is what you'll want for that. So I'm gonna set about disconnecting that and seeing if the sensor pulls back easy or not. That's the first thing I'm gonna do right now. So I have the hex head out and I've actually got this moved back now. I haven't disconnected, I'll disconnect it when I have it out of easier access which you can see the plug is there on that side to disconnect it. Uh, but that is the sensor there. Now, if yours is stuck, you, have, you obviously have a decision to make. These can be extremely tight on some vehicles. This is a 2013. It was always going to be freer than an older model. I was at an Outlander before. It didn't matter what you do. This was never going to come out without braking. Um, so you have to be very cautious if you do decide to use this method, method, which is switching one to another. If this isn't moving with gentle pressure, when you rock it back and over using the methods of twisting it like that, if you can't get it to back out, you won't be able to swap one to another. You will have to determine um, a different way between the sensor and that. This method is only useful if you can swap one to another easily and safely. So this one is now out and uh, I'm gonna disconnect this here now and then see if the other sensor is suitable to switch. So left and right is actually different in this one. You see the angle, see the way that is flicking to the right. If you look up to that side up there, just up where my finger is there, you can see it's actually moving to the left, uh, which means that it isn't going to be interchangeable because the space isn't, isn't there for it, which is unfortunate. Got the new wheel speed sensor just fitted now. I have it hooked up to VACOM here and I'm just gonna run the same test that I done earlier on. And I'm gonna reach over and spin it. So I'm just going to reach over now and spin it with my hand. And as you can see, the rear right G44 is now active. Just spinning that with my hand as I'm holding the camera here. So the next thing I'm do going to do is clear the faults.
going to get out of this and now I'm going to bring it for a test drive. Okay, I just pulled it outside and I'm getting ready to set off on the test drive with a ABS uh, fault like that. You will know within the first few hundred meters or not if the fault is going to return. So I'm just getting ready now to... So far so good, it looks like we have rectified this problem. So I'm just going to keep driving this up the road, I'm going to knock the camera off now and I'm going to check back in with you after this test drive is complete. I've just pulled in up the road now uh, mid test drive and everything is showing to be okay. No warning lights have come back on, no start stop error. I've switched it on and off a couple of times and it is, uh, it is remaining clear. And that is it guys, this video is now complete, the job has been a success. Please give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if you found it useful, if you got information that can help you fix your own problem. Uh, subscribe if you haven't and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.